everybody, Rachel here for Science Week. I want to go through something that is maybe not quite so discussed, and that is the testing procedure that Young Living uses on all of its oils. You probably know that Young Living has one of the most advanced laboratories in any of the essential oils world. It has the most advanced laboratory, um, but not only that, they send their labs for duplicate testing to third-party laboratories, and we're not talking about like, you know, just some podunk laboratory down the road. We're talking about like these like federally funded laboratories, like, like the places where they can detect and like the Unabomber, right? Okay, those kind of laboratories. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about some of the testing that they do, just so you get like basic familiarity with um, with some of them and and like what they are. So let's talk today about this one, GCMS. You're gonna see this over and over again in the essential oils world. So now you'll know what people are talking about. It's GC slash MS, and that stands for Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. Right. Okay. So I'm going to kind of talk about what that is real quick. This is one, one, this is like step one of all the testing that you would want your essential oil company to do. Um, and I'm going to talk about kind of how it is, what it is, how it works. And then we'll talk about why that's not the end all be all because it's not a perfect test in the sense that, um, even when you get this incredible analysis at the end of it, there's still other tests that need to be done to absolutely ensure there's no herbicides, no pesticides, no adulterants, no solvents, no synthetics, nothing like that in the essential oil. Okay. So, really what they do the GCMS test for is to break all the different components down. You know, an essential oil is made of dozens, if not hundreds of different molecules, right? We call them constituents. And so in order to identify all these different constituents, and they are still identifying constituents today, even in oils that we've been using for years, they have to separate all the constituents out and then measure and look at each one individually. So the, so the GC part of the gas chromatography, <laughs> I'm going to stumble on it, um, is where they, they separate it out. And then the mass spectrometry is where they actually measure. And I'm going to show you a little diagram to kind of help you understand how this works. So basically what they need to do is they take some sort of inert gas and inert means that it does not chemically react, right? So if you look at your periodic table of the elements, you've got, um, hydrogen and helium, these inert gases, they just don't react with anybody else. Um, or like the noble gases, right? You remember that from chemistry. So they will take, Take these molecules and put them into an inert gas, which is basically like a carrier oil, and that gas will carry the molecules and they, they kind of shoot it through this tube, okay? I'm going to show you a little diagram of the tube. All right, so here we have it. Um, Okay, so they shoot these molecules down through the tube. You can see my arrow coming down here. And basically what happens is each of the molecules is gonna interact with this tube in a different way, right? The different constituents are gonna have a different draw to whatever material that tube is made from, right? So depending on what kind of metal it is or, or whatever kind of material it is, the certain molecules from that essential oil are gonna interact with the inside of that tube, okay? And of course, the heat and coolness of the tube will make a difference on how they react. The length of the tube makes a difference on how they react. The thickness of the tube. There's lots of different variations, so don't get bogged down in that. Just understand that each of the molecules um, that are traveling through this tube are going to interact with the tube itself. Now here we have three constituents showed, okay? The first constituent the little pink triangles here, number one, they highly interact with the tube. They're gonna like gravitate or magnetize almost to the tube and move very, very slowly as that air, as that, that uh, gas is getting pushed through. They're kinda kinda wanna stick to the edges, okay? Number two is gonna go move past and they're gonna moderately interact with the tube, right? They're gonna gravitate to the sides a little bit, but they're gonna kinda keep moving. Molecule number three is gonna shoot through the tube. They're not gonna interact hardly at all with the tube. They're just gonna shoot straight through, which is what we see here. So these ones move the fastest. These ones move like the middle and these ones move the slowest. So you can see how when you take all of these molecules and throw them in there, they, they naturally start to separate themselves out. These ones stick to the side first and then these ones kind of a little more. And so as they exit out of the tube, out of the gas chromatography tube, they are already separated out, which is great. So that's when we get into the MS, mass spectrometry side of the house. That, this is my little picture. This is not really how they measure them, of course. But when they exit out of the tube here into the mass 
spectrometer, um, that is when they are separated out. And so that is when they can individually measure those molecules, okay? So there's my little drawing to show you that the mass spectrometer basically individually measures the molecules now that they've been separated from all their friends. Um, and they can even take a molecule and break it down further um, into its component molecules. And this is what they call a fingerprint. And so the name in the game of all these essential oil companies and Young Living has the largest of is they make this fingerprint database library, like kind of like how you go and, and put your thumbprint in at the police station. So all of these little molecules right here are all separated out and all measured and they are, that's their fingerprint. And so they have this massive library of all of these different fingerprints from all of these different constituents that make up all of these different oils. Um, and that is just step one of the tests that they do. And again, I want you to think about this tube here and the complexity of this, okay? The same tube and the same length of tube and temperature of tube and whatever of material is not gonna react the same with, let's say, lavender constituents as it will with frankincense. So they have to custom design this gas chromatography piece of it in order to separate out these molecules for every single essential oil. And sometimes they have to run the test more than once because they'll separate some pieces out then they have to separate other pieces out. So you can see that just this test itself is a very extensive, nuanced test. Um, but that is the step one that your essential oil company is doing. And then there's many other tests we will talk about in another video. I just wanted to give you guys a kind of a quick overview of how that all works. So first they separate all the constituents out and then they measure them and then they build their library of them. This is not a perfect process because some of the constituents look very, very similar to one another. So that's when they go to the next and next round of testing to further and further break those constituents down and discover what's in your oil. And of course, what's not in your oil. They also test for that. They wanna make sure that all the constituents that are ne necessary for therapeutic bioavailability are all in the oil. So they're testing to make sure there's nothing bad in the oil, but they're also testing to make sure that everything good that they want in the oil is in there. So. Uh, there you go. We'll touch base tomorrow.